This is a patient with a traumatic cataract. He has a large zonular dehiscence, a defect in the iris, and vitreous herniating through the uh, zonular defect seen here. We're staining with the lutriescence, uh, and now we're going to do a pars plane of vitrectomy to uh, remove the herniated vitreous. Uh, we have an anterior chamber infusion line, uh, made an uh, incision, 3 millimeters, posted it to the limbus angle down toward the optic nerve, and entered with a 23 gauge vitrector to uh, remove the uh, stained vitreous um, just enough so that it won't uh, come through and get in our way during the rest of the procedure. Uh, now we're going to place uh, iris retractors to paracentesis to pull the iris back uh, so we can uh, go ahead and do our cataract surgery safely. Um, after staining the anterior capsule with Vision Blue, we're now going to begin the capsulorexis using a uh, bent cystitone. And uh, during this, we can see that the rest of the zonules uh, appear pretty good, uh, so that's, that's a pretty good sign. Uh, I'm able to tear the rexus here without adding any additional uh, support during this maneuver. Uh, sometimes I have to add iris retractors to the capsule rim while I'm tearing to support it or use a second hand to do a two-handed tear but that was uh, not necessary in this case. After uh, tearing the rexus uh, I'm injected a little uh, viscoelastic under the anterior capsule rim and now I'm introducing a catpel tension segment which uh, I will um, hold on to, latch on to with one of my iris retractors to secure it and this will go in the equator of the bag and prevent that uh, area of zonular dehiscence from uh, collapsing during fake emulsification. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and do uh, fake emulsification on this lens which is a pretty dense nucleus. I'm going to go ahead and do a horizontal chopping technique. Um, here I'm going ahead and creating the first uh, split. The lens will be rotated and uh, I'll do a second chop and uh, this fragment will uh, come right out and then we can sort of just cartwheel our way around chopping off pieces and bringing them up uh, for fake emulsification bit by bit in a very safe manner. The uh, capsule tension segment is providing support to the area that uh, is deficient in zonules, so that's really not a problem at this point. This is a uh, Venturi pump machine, um, and uh, I like it for this kind of case very much. Here we can see we're down to the last fragment, and uh, we've added a little bit more viscoelastic, protect the cornea endothelium. And this comes out and the uh, fake emulsification is completed. Uh, we've now done the irrigation and aspiration, which um, sometimes you have to loosen the uh, iris retractor here a little bit to get that cortex that's being trapped out. Uh, I've now uh, loosened the uh, capsule tension segment uh, and I'm going to inject a capsule tension ring. Um, and now we're going to suture the capsule tension segment in place. Um, I'm going to make a scleral groove uh, right about um, one or two and a half to two millimeters posterior to the limbus here. Uh, I'm going to introduce the Gore-Tex suture with the 25 gauge forceps through a sclerotomy made at the base of the scleral groove. Uh, grab it with the other hand and pass it through the eyelet of the capsule tension segment. And with the right hand, uh, through a second sclerotomy, I'm going to retrieve it while I hold the capsule tension segment um, in place for a bit. Uh, then I can lock this in place using a slip knot. Uh, I'll adjust the tension, which is really uh, not that tight. You can see it very nicely here through the opening in the iris. It's just enough to hold this in place without putting any undue tension on it. Uh, the lens will now be uh, injected into the capsule bag. This is a one-piece hydrophobic uh, acrylic lens. Uh, which I like very much for these cases. It uh, does not develop glistenings um, and it's uh, a very uh, robust lens to place in the capsule bag for these cases in my experience. Um, we're now going to do a um, glaucose eye stent as this patient uh, does have glaucoma.
we've passed the uh, eye stent through the uh, cornea incision that we've made after rotating the patient's head in the microscope and uh, are able to easily put this uh, into Schlem's canal and release it um, so that now we can focus on the uh, iris repair. Um, we're going to make uh, multiple interrupted uh, passes uh, through the iris uh, and tie them uh, using a modified um, McGomed, uh, uh suturing technique where we pull both ends of the knot out through the same side, tie it on the outside, then pull the knot in toward the anterior chamber where it can be tightened uh, by pulling on one side uh, with the knot that's on the outside of the paracentes and, uh, and on the other side with the micro forceps with the half the knot that's on the inside of the paracentesis. Um, here you can see the second pass is made and uh, this has been pretty severely edited uh, as it's, uh, I have plenty of other videos showing iris repair. I'm just trying to demonstrate the strategy that was used here to fix this. Um, there are going to be uh, four interrupted sutures placed uh, to close this defect uh, as much as possible. And then uh, we're going to do an iridodialysis repair to bring that iris over toward the scleral wall and to get rid of that sector defect as much as possible. And uh, on this fourth uh, pass, uh, to try to bring this area of the iris together, it puts a little bit of tension on the iris. Uh, and when I tie it, there is a little bit of bleeding uh, from the iris root. Uh, and that tells me I've gone about as far as I can go bringing this defect together um, this way. And if I want to close it any further, I'm going to have to do uh, an iridodialysis type repair. So after uh, tying this as much as I can, there's still a bit of a defect here. Uh, so I'm going to cut this. And now I'm going to make a second scleral groove above my first scleral groove. And this will serve for the iridodialysis repair, which is just a little bit anterior to where my um, Gore-Tex suture is to hold the eyelid of the capsule tension segment in place. So now I'm going to place through the base of the second scleral groove uh, a tenoproline suture on a curved needle. Uh, this will pass through the scleral groove, through the root of the iris that I want to get uh, opposed to the scleral wall. And I'll dock this needle into a, a cannula so I can pull it out through a paracentesis. And um, once I pull this out, uh, I can turn it around and uh, re-enter through the paracentesis and uh, dock it into a 25-gauge needle um, and pull it out through the uh, other side of the scleral groove. Uh, once uh, it's been retrieved, I can now tie the knot uh, to secure this uh, iridodialysis repair uh, at the base of the scleral groove and then rotate the knot. Uh, when I tie this knot, it's just enough uh, tension to uh, pull the uh, iris root over to the scleral wall uh, without distorting the iris um, uh, or the pupil. This is now tied in a triple throw and then two single throws and rotated. Uh, the viscoelastic uh, and the clotted blood is removed. The uh, Gore-Tex suture is pushed down into the base of the scleral groove and uh, the case is completed um, after uh, creating physiologic pressure with a little BSS. And here's a slit lamp photo from day one post-op. Thank you for your attention.